Hi there. Welcome to Discussions with the Fashion Masters. My name is Deanna Hansen. I'm the founder of Fluid Isometrics and Block Therapy, and I cannot wait for our guest to come out, Jody Cohen. First of all, this book that she wrote is absolutely inspiring, so chocked full of information that is not only about just the topic of the day, essential oils. She has her own incredible line, but you also learn so much about the brain, about the parasympathetic nervous system, about your body in general. So Essential Oils to Boost the Brain and Heal the Body by Jody Cohen. I highly recommend it. Welcome, Jody. Please come on out and introduce yourself. Oh my God. It's such an honor to be here with you. I, I am Jody Cohen. I am the founder of Vibrant Blue Oils. I started the company in 2012. And one of the things I was an investigative journalist out of college and I really feel like that's kind of what I bring to this is I just keep learning because I'm flawed and I'm trying to heal myself and I keep unpacking more and more. And I actually created a fascia blend after the book came out because I believe um, I, I really do think that fascia and lymph are the same thing and that the nervous system is so entwined. I don't really feel you can heal without addressing the fascia. I, I agree. I actually have your fascia blend here. I love it. I'll roll it on me, then I'll block an area. So what is in this? And, and like, give us a little bit of um, instruction on you yeah. put this blend together and yeah. what, what in this blend makes this such a beautiful combination to releasing fascia and getting the lymph flowing. Well, so my backstory is I, um I'm very fight or flight, sympathetic dominant. I have always been highly anxious. And then I lost a child in a car accident and it was, um, not just the car accident, but there were other boys in the car, uh, his dad, you know, my ex-husband wound up going to prison. It was just unbelievably like the the waves. If you've ever kind of been out in the ocean and the waves just keep pummeling you, it was that kind of situation. Once I finally kind of got to the other side, I was, I was really um, struggling, you know, all of the uh, sympathetic dominant things. I like, I really need to like, this needs to be my priority. And so I made my vagus nerve my priority and I have uh, an essential oil that we put on the vagus nerve to kind of regulate the nervous system. And I knew it was helping, but it wasn't really getting me, it wasn't getting me all the way. It was kind of like I was treading water. So I wasn't drowning, but I wasn't swimming to shore. So I'm like, what's getting in the way of this? And so I started looking at what else is going on around this nerve, you know, and the neck is so under acknowledged, you know, it is really the highway between the brain and the body. It's what, if the neck is clear, then all the oxygen nutrients can flow into the body and all of the waste, all of the metabolic waste, all of the metals, all of the other things can kind of leave the body and not stay in the brain and turn on the immune system and cause brain inflammation and present like brain fog and fatigue and pain and all of these things. And so when I started unpacking the neck, you know, it's obviously the circulatory system, the lymphatic system, the vagus nerve, the structure and the fascia. And I'm like, huh, I wonder if the things around the vagus nerve are impacting the vagus nerve. And I stumbled on some research, this uh, Italian researcher, Marcus uh, Ruggiero, was starting to take sonograms of the neck and he was finding you could actually see the lymph that was super congested. And it was almost like, um, you know, if you've ever been in the middle seat in an airplane between like two linebackers, I've had those moments <laughs> like I couldn't even turn pages of my, you know, you're just so compressed and congested. Yeah. And he found that that was what was happening to the vagus nerve is the lymph was congested, the fascia, you know, was clenching. And so there was no mobility and no signaling. So he started working on the lymph and the fascia to unpack that. And I have a, a lymph oil and, you know, I'm slightly obsessed with opening the clavicle, opening the neck. I kind of know how to lymphatic drain, but again, if your fascia is constricted, that gets in the way. So I was really doing a deep dive into lymphatics. I was getting lymphatic massages. Uh, one of my dear friends, Kelly Kennedy, is the, the lymph queen, and she has this flow presso machine. So I was in the flow presso, kind of thinking about lymph and fascia. And I got this really clear download that fascia is so complicated because it's obviously the physical structure, you know, and oils can help with expansion and fluid flow, but it's also the issues are in the tissues. So it's where all of our emotional baggage lives, all those feelings we don't want to feel, you know, we're angry at someone, but we're a good girl. We don't feel anger. We're a pleaser. So we just stuff that, you know, someone breaks our heart, but we don't want to be too sad and needy, you know, so we just stuff it. We're carrying around all of our unprocessed business. And so when we start to, you know, like even I was telling you, like just laying on this on the stomach, 
oh my goodness, all the feelings that I didn't want to feel. It's not just, it, you can't separate the tissues from the issues. They're really interwoven. And oils, quite truthfully, are the most effective way I've found to help you process through all those feelings you don't want to feel because it almost makes it easier. You know, you can smell things and the nose is literally, you know, the highway to the brain. It goes straight into the brain. The blood brain barrier is so much thinner in the nasal passageways. And then smell is kind of, it has access to the brain that the other four senses don't have because um, it's what keeps us alive. You smell food, you smell water, you smell predator odor, you smell fire. It's a protective mechanism. So when you smell it, it goes straight to the amygdala, which is where emotions are stored. And so it's kind of a, a hack or just the easiest, most efficient way to, you know, you're lying on your block, you're feeling your feelings. You want to jump off your block because you don't want to feel your feelings. Sometimes if you smell something or topically apply it, it allows you to process your feelings in a less painful, intense way. Wow. That is just fascinating. So first of all, I am so sorry to hear what you've gone through with your son. That is just unbelievable. I don't have children myself, so I, I can't even imagine that feeling of loss, but amazing how you've taken something so tragic and you're turning it into an opportunity to really educate and help the masses because I mean, that's probably one of the hardest things anybody would ever go through is losing a child. So to be able to, you know, again, pull that into your being and figure out ways to work through that. You're going to be, you know, reaching so many people with this message and giving them these opportunities. I have people reaching out all the time because of course, when people are blocking and they're getting their system mobilized, yes, these emotions come out. So I love this because to be able to give people an understanding of how can we support the, the anger, the pain, the guilt, the, whatever it is that's been so stored in us. And I mean, you know, it's like, it, it's so lovely to see babies, right? Because they cry right away. They don't hold back their emotions. And then we get trained along the way to stuff, as you mentioned, all of these feelings. Yeah. And yeah, they're stuck inside. So when we start to do really profound work in the body, we jar them up. And to be able to have a way to kindly allow them to express themselves outward is such a blessing. Yeah, it really calms the intensity significantly. And, and thank you for acknowledging that. I think one of my um, other people have noticed is one of the things that I, I really like about myself is sometimes when, um, you know, something shows up that's not on my bucket list or life throws me a curveball, I try to get really curious, like, hmm, this is really interesting. Like, I wonder what I get to learn from this. You know, like even uh, during COVID, I, I lost smell for a couple of days and I was like, oh, this is so interesting. I wonder if oils work when you can't smell them. Because I get that question all the time. So I'm like, oh, interesting. Hey. Yeah. If you can kind of stay curious, it's yeah. a really fabulous way to kind of navigate through anxiety because then you're just like, oh, it's kind of an experiment. Like, I wonder, you know, will, will this work? You know, and, and to your, your original question was what is in the fascia blend? Um, it's a combination. So Angelica root, which is very, very helpful for all the emotional things. And I think also kind of, um, you know, we all have our different spiritual beliefs, but I, I really do feel like it's slightly angelic and it kind of calls on that support. Um, black pepper, which is amazing for vasodilation. So just kind of bringing heat and helping to physically move things. Cypress, which is also really good for like hydration and moving fluid. LMI, frankincense, which is good for everything. Frankincense and lavender, um, also really harmonizing rose, which is amazing for emotion and sadness. Uh, we have a blend lung support, but rose also works. You know, sometimes uh, in Chinese medicine, all of the organs are associated with uh, feelings. And so the lungs are grief. And so when, right after my son, his name was Max, died, I would wake up and it was almost like I had a Charlie who was in my lungs. Like I couldn't even breathe. It was so intense. And I found that either applying our lung support or rose oil over the heart like that, you know, it's like you have the Charlie horse and you stand up and put pressure on your calf and suddenly you feel slightly better. <laughs> you know, if you put the oil over your heart, it made a really profound immediate difference. Mm. And it, any, anytime, uh, you know, I'm at the age where my friend's parents are passing away. Anytime anyone loses something, I just send them that right away. And across the board, they're like, that was incredibly helpful. Thank you. Wow. Wow. Yeah after I got the diagnosis, my mom passed a couple of years ago. And right after I got the diagnosis about her condition and the time she had left, I was, I was amazed because I mean, I've been doing this work on myself for 24 years now and the inability for me to not fall in 
because of the grief. So then I created my grief support class as a result of that, working from a seated position, getting through the lungs and through all of those things. So I, I wish I had uh, some of this at the time, because I'm sure that would have made this whole journey a lot easier for me. Um, mm -hmm. So back to your question about the, um, if you can't smell, um, yeah. Does it still affect the brain? In the still, same it completely works. It works exactly the same way, which is so interesting to me because, you know, there are certain things that we know, there's certain things that we suspect, and there's certain things that are kind of unknown. But I, I do believe that everything on this planet is kind of designed to work in harmony, you know, with each other. Like, I, I love that you talk about rooting and grounding. I really do think that the more you can kind of be barefoot and connect to the planet, you know, the more um, in balance and, and in rhythm you are. And so I do believe that every plant has its own kind of helping purpose. And when you combine them, you know, it's a little bit like a symphony, like every instrument sounds gorgeous on its own. And then when you combine it, they kind of harmonize together. So I'm not sure that you actually need to smell it to have it work. Okay. That's very interesting. Um, and by the way, they smell incredible. Like <laughs> I, I think I have six different of your oils. And I was putting the lymph like, you know, around my neck when I would go to bed and just, yeah, it, it just really gives you this beautiful sense of calm and, and the sleep. And I mean, I'll notice sometimes if I'm trying to fall asleep in bed, how I'm unconsciously holding parts of myself. Yes. And then suddenly I'll use that when I'm not able to go to sleep. And suddenly I'm just like, oh, interesting. Like, so talk a little bit about that blood brain barrier, because I don't think a lot of, I mean, I, I learned so much reading, but there's a lot of research and detail in here and I'm not a detail holder. So yeah. I'd love for you to just talk a little bit about that and why essential oils are so significant with healing in regard to how they bypass that blood brain barrier. Yeah. And I mean, if you think about it in our world today, so many of the issues that people have are really brain issues, right? Anxiety, depression, autoimmunity, dementia. You know, there's so many things. And one of the challenges is getting the right remedy into the right area of the brain, right? And it's really challenging because the blood brain barrier is kind of like a, a SWAT team, a security guard system. And they only let, um, you know, super small fat soluble molecules through. Like people, you know, we all talk about essential fatty acids. You know why essential fatty acids are amazing for the brain? Because they can actually get through the blood brain barrier. Like you can't do chemo in the brain because the molecules are too big. So the challenge, essential oils actually in research have been used as Trojan horses, like to try to, they mix, you know, like I think ibuprofen and try to get things into the brain by combining them with essential oils. So they are kind of known for being able to cross the blood brain barrier. And then the other interesting thing is that it's really the thinnest during, you know, through the nasal passageways. So topically applying oil, you know, smelling oil, all of these things, it's just getting, it's allowing, you know, it's getting into the right area of the brain. You know, the ambulance that's stuck in traffic is not going to save a life just because it can't get there. So it kind of takes, you know, the, the challenges of healing the brain. One of the first challenges is access and it gives you access. Well, and that's so cool because I mean, we always uh, teach people about um, breathing in and out through the nose. And a lot of people, question the reasons why so I mean I think there's a raft of reasons I mean the whole structure of the the, the nostril and and the turbinates and then how it gets directed is absolutely phenomenal but I mean here's another one like here's another very specific reason right because yeah if you can't sense that predator because you're breathing through your mouth then you're probably going to get eaten <laughs> And it's interesting too. I'm, I'm a big fan. I love yoga and alternate nostril breathing. I really think that's incredibly powerful. And even, you know, different sides of the brain, um, you know, it's interesting, usually the right side of, of the body, right brain controls left body with the exception of the nostrils, the nostrils literally go right nostril, right brain, left nostril, left brain. And they go to a part of the brain that's really important for focus and paying attention, the prefrontal cortex, which can get turned off. Like, you know, the idea when your body's trying to survive, anything not critical to immediate survival gets kind of downregulated. You know, you don't really need to get pregnant if the lion might eat you. You don't really need to digest your food, detoxify your nutrients, or or hyper focus because if you're fixated on something, you are you know you could get killed. So it kind of turns down. This was a really interesting discovery. Um, I was kind of I had an incredibly stressful day where. A lot was coming at me, including a uh, a wrongful death attorney who, you know, some of these 
professions work by like putting you into this state of panic and then kind of preying on your panic in a way that doesn't necessarily benefit you. So anyway, I had this a uh, really like alarming phone call. And the, the guy was really pressuring me. You have to decide if you make a decision. And I was like, oh my God, I am so dysregulated. I My decision was to hang up on him and and to realize like he's telling me all these things and I can't even think. And then I um I activated my vagus nerve to kind of calm my sympathetic fight or flight and turn on my parasympathetic rest and digest. And suddenly I was like, <laughs> what do you think doesn't even make any sense? Like why, you know, it's kind of like my friends that they get the uh, pre-cancer diagnosis and they're like, you have to have surgery tomorrow. And I'm like, why tomorrow? Like, why can't you take a day and get a second opinion? You know, I think when you have that space to like think it and really look at it and say, well, that, does this make sense? Does this need to be today? Do I have other options? You know, I had a, a therapist who used to say the opposite of it. I don't feel safe is I have choices. So one of my favorite things to do when I get into kind of overwhelm or paralysis is to uh, to calm my nervous system. We have an oil called parasympathetic that um, the vagus nerve is the gear shift between fight or flight and safety. And it's, it connects the brain and the body, you know, most accessible from the back of the neck right here. So I put that on and I really breathe because breathing also activates your parasympathetic nervous system. And then I just start making a list of what are my options. And what's so fascinating to me is the more options that you have, the safer you feel, you know, and you always have two, you can always do nothing or you can always wait and do something tomorrow. Like those are the first two when you're trying to brainstorm, but all of a sudden you're like, wait a minute, I have choices. I'm going to be okay. It's fine. That's such great information because I mean, that's just it. When when we don't have the space yes. to do anything other than receive whatever onslaught we're going through. And yes. then it's like, holy smokes, I need to act or re- not even act. We need to react yeah. really. Um, so I, I just love that because I've always believed that too. No matter what, I have a choice. Even if it's, even if both choices aren't great, I have a choice always. Yes. That's what well, we've been gifted in this world, right? The ability to choose. Well, and I have dogs. So one of my choices is often to like walk my dogs or I love this. One of my choices is to kind of, um, you know, I don't know why, but for me, the diaphragm and my sternum is really tight. So yeah. that's something that just kind of helps. Well, that's so- heartache. I mean, that's just so much guarding. Yeah. Can can we dive in a little bit more? Like you, you wrote so much beautiful information about the parasympathetic nervous system. And I learned so much from you. And I've on a number of my podcasts recently, I've been quoting your book, quoting you, Um, Because I was just like, wow, I mean, I thought that actually the systems, the parasympathetic and sympathetic were supposed to be balanced. But in here, you share that parasympathetic should be 80% of your day. I didn't know that. And the majority of people, I think, are probably 100% sympathetic most of the time. We really, it's, it's a little bit like, you know, a lot of people with their devices, like they never turn it off and they keep it by their bed. Like... You know, I yeah. think our nervous system is so wired now that it's it's very, you have to be very intentional to turn it off and, and calm down. Yeah. So if somebody were to come to you with just a complete, I, I get this question a lot from people that are, you know, just learning about the process, nervous because they're holding so much past trauma. Um, yeah. What would you say is a, like regarding your essential oils, like a protocol to start with? just to make things like really simple for people, because I know when people are overwhelmed in their body, they're overwhelmed in general. So what are some simple, like what would be the first thing that you would get them to do the first scent or whatever, if I'm just a total stress nightmare? Yeah, I would totally start with the parasympathetic because it's kind of like, you know, if you're, if you're running a marathon and you're just going and going and going and going and going, like you just need to take a pause. You just need to take a breath. Like the the ideal thing would actually be to have them um, practice your deep breathing. But sometimes when you're so in it, you just can't, you can't see the forest through the trees. And so you're just on it. So um, what's really interesting, the, the vagus nerve, it's, it's vagus nerve stimulation, right? When I originally, I was kind of a a yoga, you know, I've been doing yoga forever. I knew what the vagus nerve was. And I was thinking, oh, oils, you know, this idea of topical application is so easy because it's kind of hard. You can't necessarily take a pill that gets to the vagus nerve or the neck. You can breathe. I think breathing is actually the best. For some reason, I feel like when people are overwhelmed, breathing feels hard, which is curious, but they just need something else like a quick fix. So 
I started playing with like what oils would stimulate the vagus nerve. I originally thought it would be like calming oils, like lavender, chamomile, that didn't really help. And then I was like, wait, stimulatory. You know, a lot of essential oils are perceived as stimulatory, which means they're, they're hot, you know, like peppermint, cinnamon, uh, thyme, oregano. If you put a drop on your arm, which I'm not recommending because it would get red and it would be a little uncomfortable. Um, you know, it, it, it feels hot. If, if you do put a drop on your arm, dilute with another oil, not water. But I started realizing like, wait a minute, there's this potential to use like an oil, almost like an acupuncture needle as in a really stimulatory capacity. So I tested all of them. Clove tested the best, which isn't surprising because it's incredibly high in this constituent eugenol, which is kind of amazing for everything, including inflammation. But you know, there's a, a chemistry to this, right? So clove has kind of medium sized molecules, which means if you topically apply, it might take like 15 to 20 minutes to get through the skin. All of the citrus oils like lime, super small molecules get into the system really quickly. So you combine them, clove and lime, and you get this super stimulatory, gets into the system quickly. Um, one thing with citrus oils, people are concerned that they're photosensitive. That's only true um, if you cold press it. If you distill it, meaning that you kind of boil it and let it evaporate, it is not sensitive to the sun. So you can put it, uh, I was accused that my hair gets in the way, so I'm gonna show you without my hair. Right, if you feel behind the earlobe, you're gonna feel bone, that's your mastoid bone. It's right there. That is a really good place to put the oil. There are also lymph nodes there. And so that that to me is step one, is um, kind of opening the vagus nerve. Step two can vary depending on what's going on with people. Like um, if they're not sleeping, I like to encourage them to sleep. But you know, uh, if, they, if they're overachievers and they wanna do more than step one, then I basically have them start with parasympathetic for a couple of days and just make sure they're okay with it. Because some people are, uh, they've been in fight or flight for so long that when you start to help them um, heal, you know, and, and detoxify and all these things, like if, if the body's been holding on to toxins forever and suddenly it's like safe to come out of hiding, you know, all of a sudden if lymph is congested, they might not feel great. So I just like to see how does that go? You know, like let's start there and see how it goes. Um, and then we can layer in like lymphatic drainage. I'm a huge fan, you know, all of the lymph drains through the clavicles, 75% through the left side. So just really opening these clavicles. I have some videos. There's this guy, Perry Nickerson, Stop Chasing Pain, that has a great demonstration of lymph drainage. And then I add in the fascia and, and your block, you know, and I think that does the combination of just helping to get you open enough so that you can start to feel. And then if you're feeling um, unbelievable sadness, uh, we have a lung support blend or, or rose that I really like. If you're feeling crazy anger, uh, we have a liver support blend. I used to call that like um, when my daughter would have that time of month, I'm like, you know, she's like, I'm like, no, I have an oil for you, you know? So I just, I mean, it's funny because I've never done this actually, if I've been, you know, on an interview and I have yeah. the parasympathetic and I just put it here. And yeah. what I noticed immediately, which was really cool is the sides of my rib cage just kind of went, oh, like really neat, like immediate. Yeah. yeah. Can you overdo it? I mean, if, you know, for me, I'm putting this on, like how many, how many times a day would you app? apply it? Or is it like just at night? Or do you just kind of go with like how we say with blocking, like you really got to kind of test your body, see how you feel and kind of guide your process along that way? Um, I probably overdo it. I, I mean, there, there were times in my life when I was probably doing it every five minutes, you know, cause I, I am anxious and I, I run hot. And so that was really kind of like my touchstone. Um, for people who are just getting started, like the easiest way, you know, to start a new habit is to link it to an old habit. So assuming you brush your teeth twice a day, morning and night, I just say, leave it by your toothbrush. And when you're brushing your teeth, just do it then. Okay. And what I've noticed is that for people who are like, wow, that really helps. All of a sudden it's in their pocket, you know, and, and if you want to continue slowly, it's a good thing to do before meals. It's kind of your vagus nerve that signals your whole digestive cascade. So so many of us are kind of eating under stress. So we're not necessarily digesting, absorbing and assimilating our nutrients. So it's just, it's always good to do before meals. And then if you're like me and you run hot, you can certainly, uh, you know, do it frequently. The one thing that I find kind of interesting, you know, it's a little bit Pavlovian. After a while, just smelling it kind of triggers the whole, the same response. Cause you're like, oh yeah, relax. And so the brain learns, right? Yes, um, exactly. Wow. 
That's amazing. And I, I love that because now this will be my new routine. Like whenever I always share with people, um, as lovely as it is to, you know, sit around a table and enjoy a meal with loved ones. To me, it's, it's so contradictory because talking and chewing, you know, uses one muscle, but they're different functions. And, and then also we're not breathing properly. And part of the function of diaphragmatic breathing is to create that mechanical action on the stomach organ to help the whole process. So, I mean, yeah, I, I talk a lot about it's not only what we eat, it's largely how we oh, eat that really functions. So to funny. be able to do this now, I'm going to do this every time before I have a meal. Um, so simple. And it's, so it's simple. great for kids too. You know, like it basically, um, one of the big challenges with digestion is a uh, hydrochloric acid, right? And so there are supplements like betaine that um, I was that mom that was like, you know, cooking every kale recipe I could find to see what my kids would actually eat. It was hard to get them to take supplements, but Oils were especially easy and, you know, I don't recommend oils for children under two, but for anyone older than two, you know, my kids never said no to like, oh, can mommy rub your feet? <laughs> you know, they're like, yeah. What I also love about this, just as I'm sitting here smelling this beautiful combination is it's also the memory to do the things you're supposed to do. Yeah. You know, so like now as I'm smelling it, if I'm talking and eating, I'll be like, wait a sec, I'm not supposed to be doing two things at once. I should be just uh -huh. chewing and I should be breathing while I'm, you know, going through this process. So it's, it's this really nice hack to, yeah. you know, remind you to do the things that we should be doing when we're using our body the way we're supposed to be using it. Yeah, there's a lot of research actually on the correlation of smell and memory. Like some people smell peppermint when they're studying vocab words and then smell it again before the test and they uh -huh. remember it. Or like, I don't know why um, I grew up in the Pacific Northwest in blackberries. The smell of blackberries, like in August, always remind me of my best friend's cabin. You know, it just all of a sudden you're there and you're like, oh, yeah. Well, it's the Christmas tree for me, like those real, yeah. you know, trees and that smell. It just it immediately brings that sense of warmth and comfort into my body. Yeah. So, I mean, it's so lovely. Yeah. Um, wow. So what other, um, so we, we've, we've covered parasympathetic, we've covered liver, um, the adrenal one. Have we yeah. talked about the adrenal mix no, yet? That, that one is kind of um, another favorite. It's, it's funny. I do yoga most days and I bring a parasympathetic lymph adrenal circulation and fascia and fascia. I will say this because um, my hips are still tight. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm going to be a work in progress for a while, but I've noticed, especially with the roller ball, you can kind of do it, you know, really subtly right under your yoga pants. Like if I'm in pigeon or some kind of hip opening pose and I'm like, this is, I am so tight. I can put it on and immediately feel more open. The adrenal is great for stress and also for low back pain. Like I've noticed that, you know, there, there are two adrenals, they sit on top of your kidneys, which kind of lines up with your bottom rib. But if, if one is overactive, it can kind of twerk your pelvis a little bit. So you might feel uncomfortable or if you're in yoga and you know, say you're trying to do tree pose and you just can't hold your pose. I put it on the low back right over the kidneys. It kind of, it, it's amazing how quickly I feel in balance. So it's very grounding and centering. And kind of not, um, you know, it's it's a bit of Goldilocks, right? I think a lot of things, there are a lot of remedies that you can take that, you know, pump up your cortisol or calm down your cortisol. But if you've ever taken that 24 saliva test, you're not flatline. Like sometimes you're up, sometimes you're down. So it's a, a kind of guessing game of like, oh, let me try to time the supplement at the right time. But um, adaptogenic herbs are like Goldilocks. You know, if you're too high, they kind of bring you down. If you're too low, they kind of bring you up. And I think oils work in the same way where they just kind of meet you where you're at and balance you. That's incredible. So you can put them basically anywhere on your body, but exactly. I mean, you definitely want to be focused where if it's adrenal, put it on your adrenals, liver on yeah. your liver, and then yeah, fascia yeah. anywhere that you're, you know, feeling yeah. any tension or pain. That's pretty much how I try to do it. Yeah. And then what about um, like hydration? Like, because now... Are, are we releasing more using this? So now we really need to be awake to, you know, I mean, we should always be hydrated anyway, but I mean, you know, they often say if you're going to be doing something like take in more water or whatever, there's a lot of conversations about proper hydration and structured water. Um, do you have any thoughts on that as well? Uh, I'm a huge fan of hydration and uh, I try to structure my water. I try to drink electrolytes. I try to support my kidneys. We have a kidney blend that is really about releasing fear, but I've noticed I've been trying to do um, a, a heavy metal detox 
you know, I have this hypothesis, we'll see how it flows out, but I have Hashimoto's, which I always heard was Mercury and Epstein-Barr. And Epstein-Barr is pretty much in remission. So I'm like, huh, let's see if I can chelate the mercury and if it can change anything. Um, and I have been noticing, I definitely have more afternoon energy and my skin is a lot less dry and I'm a lot less cold, but it's fascinating because I'm always craving electrolytes. I'm like, huh, well, you know, because um, when you remove one thing, you have to replace it. And I've also been putting the kidney oil on my low back because, you know, that is really where the fluid flows in the body. So I'm intrigued with it. And I, I do believe there is an aspect, I'm still playing with this. Like I have a lot of things that I'm like, I have a hypothesis, but I haven't really uh, flushed it out enough. But the, the fascia and the lymph, first of all, I think they're kind of one system, but I do think it's not, Gia Bria talks about this a lot. It's not just what you drink. It's kind of how your body uses that water, you know, and, and like your block to kind of um, remove blockages so that more hydration can flow to tissues. That's, that's something I want to learn more about that you do a great job, but I just feel like um, it's, it's so shocking to me. How, how does everyone not know this? Right. <laughs> Yeah, um, I've got a few theories on that, but that's a different conversation. Um, yeah, yeah it, it is. And what is really exciting now, though, is that, you know, so many people like minded, the messages are getting out and we need a raft of things because we're being pummeled, right? Like with toxins, with radiation, with everything and and just the stress that everybody is under. So it's it's just so lovely to, you know, and that was what I so appreciated reading your book, too. I felt like I was like we, we kind of write in a very similar way about adhesion, about the flow. So um, uh -huh. the more that we can support the flow, yes. I mean, the better we are. And, and that's just so huge. Well, and the one thing that I, I do want to talk about also is, is the heart. We have a heart blend. And what I found so fascinating, like there's certain poses in yoga. I do yoga, you know, some things are like ridiculously easy and some things like the heart opening was always so hard. The hip opening is always so hard. And so what I've realized is I have a heart opening oil that I put on the front of the heart, but fascia in the back, you know, like oh. fascia is I think linked to everything, but the heart is another thing that I want to, you know, everyone talks about the gut brain connection. Well, what's between the gut and the brain, the heart. I, I think there's a lot more, um, to be learned about the heart. And I actually really like what you do with, with the block. I feel like that is, is a really important piece of it. Thank you. Um, yeah. And I, I have a, you know, sort of a way that I like to explain what's going on with the lack of connection of the gut brain, because of course the heart is what's driving the blood to reach all of the cells. If all of the cells are receiving the life force, then all of the cells communicate with the brain so we can be in the moment with every moment that we come through, where if we have adhesions or scar tissues or scar tissue and congestion riddled throughout the body, the heart is maybe only reaching, you know, let's call it 10, 20% of the cells. So now we have all these gaps in the system. And so now we only have 10 or 20% of the cells giving us the information. So we start relying on memory. And then we get caught in those trauma responses because we don't have that connection. And it comes really through the diaphragm because the diaphragm is going to be the driver of everything from the heart to the body. And so, uh, yeah, that's kind of, you know, how I see the, the heart being, of course, the most important organ because we can survive without a brain. Our body can, but not without our heart functioning. And as soon as the breath stops, then the heart will too. So, um, yeah, we just got to get open and flowing. And, and really, I mean, I see it as just using our body the way God intended us to use it. We were born to breathe diaphragmatically. We were born to stand with our palms facing forward, you know, like anatomical position. And then when you see people where they're collapsed and then, of course, the palms are facing the back of the body, that's just everybody's natural positioning. And then where's the tongue gone? I love all the information coming out now in that breath book, which is beautiful about the whole yes. alignment of the tongue and and the breathing through the nose. I mean, like all of this information is coming out all at the same time um, yes. to really support all of our individual journeys. Because when you're coming up with fairly, I think it's ancient information, but I mean, in this world, it's That's new right. information. Um, you know, we, we need each other. We're remembering. To Yes, I think we're remembering what we used to know. Well, and there you go about the essential oils, because if that sense of smell connects us most to the memory, um, maybe we're like waking up those that archaic past of ours. And, yeah. and we're remembering really who we should be. Yeah, no, I wow. agree completely. Amazing. 
So what else would you like the listeners to know about you, about what you've created, about what you understand, all all of that? I'm, I'm sure there's more that you'd love to share. The one thing that that I really want to leave people with is the sense of empowerment, because I think there's so much going on in the world that may make people feel like, oh, you know, I I don't really have options or I'm a victim or whatever it is. Um, And one of the things like when Max died, I had this idea that if I could find people who survive very horrible things, if someone else had done it, then I could do it. And so I was kind of on this quest of like, you know, let's see how other people navigated hard times. And one of the books that I, I really loved was um, Victor Frankel's Man's Search for Meaning. You know, Victor Frankel was a Holocaust. I've read that. Fascinating. Yeah, and, and the quote that really stood out to me was, uh, between the stimulus and the response, there is a space. And in that space lies your power to choose your response. And in your response lies your growth and your freedom. And what that meant to me was kind of when I'm feeling um, you know, overwhelmed or, or almost like, you know, like your daughter's calling, your dog is barking. Uh, there's someone at your front door and you're on a deadline, you know, like everything's happening at once and you're just flooded. Um, if you can calm your nervous system and I do that by applying my parasympathetic oil, your diaphragmic breathing works, all of these ways to just kind of return to regulation, like, you know, return to factory settings, then all of a sudden you can take things in and, and make really good choices. You know, I used to, um, when I, I worked for Microsoft for a while, when my kids were little and I'd be rushing out the door and I'd have a meeting and traffic was messy, you know, and my little one, Max would be like, Mommy. and I realized that the more I just leaned into it, just like, all right, I guess I'm just going to be like, what do you need, buddy? Then all of a sudden it was fine. And, and, it, you know, you just, if you can kind of be calm and be present, a lot of these things that you, you, you may not be able to change the external world, but you can always change how you show up. And that's a lot of power. That is a huge message. And I'm so grateful you shared that because like, that is so true. And, you know, if, if you're feeling that way, then you might end up barking at your loved ones as opposed to being kind and thoughtful in your responses. And then that will impact them to impact more people. So, I mean, that's, it's, it's the butterfly effect, right? Like it's such a great message if we can all just take that moment. And that's why, you know, I'm going to be keeping this in my pocket because anytime I, I mean, we all have that, like I got to catch a plane tomorrow. And I mean, inevitably there's going to be stress, right? So if I can be, if I'm in that middle seat between two huge people, I'm going to be just dabbing this on me the whole time. Yeah. Yeah. And you can, you can choose to put oil on, you can choose to maybe pivot. I think I actually did pivot to read my book. (laughs) Probably not great for my posture, but whatever. (laughs) Yeah. Those temporary moments in time though, they, they can be undone easily. Yeah. This has been just fascinating. I am I'm so grateful that you came out and you shared more. I've learned so much from you, from your book, from how I feel, from your beautiful oils as well. This is just like priceless information. And I mean, our community is going to love this because we're we're all we're all doing the work together. And and again, you know, um we need more than just one thing. And, and to have things that are simple. Um, for me, I'm not inclined to take pills, to take those kinds of things. I don't want to put stuff in my body, but this yeah. is simple to do. It's a nothing. And yet yeah. it's so profound. And I mean, I can still smell this and it's still making me feel really calm. So um, yeah, I'll be, I'm going to be smelling like this all the time. It's my new cologne. <laughs> yeah, well, no, and I, and I love the work that you do. I think it's really profound as well. So thank you. This was such an honor. Thank you. So Jody, how can people find you? We'll, we'll have all of your links below the video, but um, share so they can hear. Just head over to vibrantblueoils.com. Um, if you have any questions, you can shoot us an email at info at vibrant blue oils. Uh, my assistant's actually out on maternity leave. So I'm in the inbox a lot. And is your book available just on your site or is it on Amazon? How do people oh, it, find I it? I it through um, Random House. So it's every, oh. every books can be sold. Congratulations. How very exciting. And honestly, it's one of the best reads um, as far as giving the combination of the science, but delivered in such an ingestible way, combined with understanding your own body and here's solutions that are simple and easy to follow. So um, truly exceptional work. So Jody, thank you so much. And thank all of you for taking the time. Uh, This has been very enlightening. And I encourage all of you to get on board so we can all move forward in our life in the most peaceful, healthy way possible. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.